in this video we're going to focus on how we can make these scales dynamic so you can see here the x and y title so if i hover over this one here you can see it changes on thursday and then it goes back to its original state but of course here as well you can see a currency for example for monday it shows dollars then you have here the peso and we can go here and it's wednesday the euro and the rupee and all kind of other options as well so let's start to explore how to do this so let's start with how to change the scale titles when hovering on a bar in chart.js so the first thing what i need is we need to go to chartjs3.com getting started at this specific link here which you can also find in the description box to get our default code so i'm going to scroll down here and just copy this entire chunk of code here and if you want to understand what this code does make sure you watch this video here so then what i want to do here is i'm going to paste that in there and once i did that i'm going to cut out this title here and put it in there there we go save refresh and there we are so now we have a nice a bar chart but of course i want to have scales in here so what i'm going to do here or more specifically title for the scales on the x and y so we're going to say here on the x we're going to say here title which is an object as well and within the title we say display true and then what we can do your comma is we'll say your text let's say here uh, i'll make it simple and just say your week and then here comma and for the y we can do here something else i guess let's say sales in currency or something like that so we're going to say here or i can just put it here below comma and then we're going to say title and then this title will be focused on or you shall say on display and this will be true again boolean value and text here what will it be let's say your currency save that refresh there we are so now we have this and what we want to do now is the following i want to put in when you hover for example on this one here i want to see instead of week i want to see monday and i want to say here maybe the dollar sign or any other currency that we would have so to do this i'm going to go down here and i'm going to use what we call a mouse move handler or basically a mouse move functionality so what i'm going to say here function i'm going to say mouse move and let's call it a mouse move handler and then i'll just put in like this for now and i'll just put in here some additional space and then here what i want to do here is to make sure that the canvas understands it if you mouse move it will understand if there's a trigger on here so th you might say isn't it more like a hoover effect well the answer is yes and no how can you see it well if you're on a canvas you're hovering on top of the canvas and what will happen then is if you hover on top of the canvas no matter where you hover it is always considered hoover until you are away from the canvas so what we really need is a mouse move that would hover over a specific item here for example this bar within this pixels if you are on here mouse move within these borders in that case it should trigger the mouse move event so what i'm going to do here first of all is to make sure we pinpoint our canvas so we say here my chart which is this item but then we have to say a dot the canvas because i want to pinpoint the canvas specifically and i'm going to say here on mouse move equals the mouse move handler and what I want to do now is just very straightforward. Say here, console log. Yes. And then make sure that this is a string value. Save that. Refresh. Open up developer tab. And then if I refresh again, and if I move over here, you can see here every item is being triggered here. And it records every movement. So this is correct. So what I want to do now is to make sure that it understands that instead of no matter where we hover over we only hover on the bars or basically within this border area of all of these items here or elements so that's what we're going to do now so in here this basically can be removed now what i'm going to do here is the following i'm going to say here this function here i'm going to have here the parameter of mouse move which is basically the record of this mouse move here so then what I'm going to say here is I'm going to create a constant and let's say this constant will be the points which will be eventually 
wherever we move with our mouse, it will track that. And then we're going to do the following. We're going to say here, my chart dot say here. I'm going to use here a specific command that is built in into chart.js to get the element at event for mode. So in this case, what we're really doing is we're going to say here, we're going to get the element at an event. And what is our event? Well, mouse move in this case. We're going to put it in there, mouse move, comma. And then we're going to say here, nearest, meaning that if we are mouse moving our item, closest to the specific item here, it would get the nearest value. Or well, basically, if we move here, the nearest value would be this red bar here. So then I'm going to say a comma, and I'm going to put in here again another command, which is intersect, and we'll set this on true. And what this truly means is the following. Intersect basically means like a crossing. Think about an intersection where you have a crossing where two roads cross each other or intersect each other. And that's basically what we're dealing here. So if our mouse would intersect to the nearest, which would be this item here, and then it will grab here the nearest value, which is the Monday in this case. So the intersection is basically the movement from the moment I just hit the border here, so it would trigger. That's basically what I'm doing here. Then I say your comma true again to make sure that this is true. All right, so now we have this. And what I want to do here is the following. I'm going to say here, uh, let's do a console log for the points. Save that, refresh, open up developer tab. Let's refresh one more time so the chart has a proper size. Now you can see here now it records something. However, it records a length of zero. So there's no item in here. But the moment I move on here, and let's scroll down. As you can see, let me refresh one more time, you will see it. The moment I hover on a bar, it will recognize something. And you can see here what it recognizes. It sees here an element, length of one, data set, element, index, gives us all the information we need. So basically, at this moment, it registers it. So what I want to do now, instead of having it a yes or no situation, I want to only console log or get the specific value, which has a length of, as a minimum, of 1, as you can, oh, as you can see here down. But if I go here on the white space, it will have a length of 0. So what I'm going to do here now is, I'm going to say a point index 0 as a requirement. As you can see here, there we are. It shows all the information, but if I'm on the white space, it's just undefined. All right, this makes sense because there's no item in here. So what I'm going to do now is just an if statement. And I'm going to say again, point, if point has an index. If that is the case, I'm going to console log this, and if I remove this one here, save that, refresh. So now you can see here the white space not being recorded anymore, but the the moment we are on an element, at that moment, it is recorded. All right, so now we have this. So now what I want to do is the following. We're going to start recording the most important items. You can see here, if I click on this, we see here we get the data set index zero, which is correct. We only have one index, or we, we only have one data set, which is index zero. And then here, index number two, which would be reference to the data point. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what I'm going to do now is, because we need to have this information, so we can eventually start to grab certain values. So what I want to do is the following. I'm going to say here, uh, well, what we can do here is, let me just say this item here, I'm going to grab this. Eventually, then I want to show the weekdays here. So what I'm going to say here is the following. I'm going to say my chart dot config. And then we're going to say here, from here we go to options. So you might wonder why. So from my chart config to options to scales and an X. That's what I want. Scales dot X. And we say dot. Once we are here, we have to go to the title. Then dot text, white text, because that's the assignment of it. So we assign the text, and we're going to say equal. Equal to what? Well, we can make a string text here. Let's say here, test. If I do this, there we are. Or it's supposed to work, of course, but why it doesn't work, I need to do here an update. So I'm going to say here, my chart dot update. Save that, refresh. 
there we are so now you can see it starts to change of course i'm not satisfied with this because this is a um, hard-coded text so what i want to do now is i want to make this soft-coded how do we do this you can find here the index so i'm going to grab this here so what i'm going to do here now is a uh, constant and i'm going to say a data set and a data set is what exactly it is points zero and then here data set index so this will be important and the data set index um this this is basically the number so we have to make sure we have this correctly this is the point here this is the index number all right so this would refer to zero let me just show you to make sure we have it correct and then i'll comment out this if you save this now refresh there we are zero all right so now we have that one so the next one is of course for the index itself so i'm going to say here and let's give this a uh, let's say data point. I'll give a data point, and the reason why is to avoid confusion. And here I have to just check what is the name. I, I'm not saying it's index. So let's double check, refresh, Hoover, click here. Because here index, data set index, and then we have index. All right, so that's the name of index, would be the number itself. If I get this put in here, comment this out, save, refresh. There we are. You can see here it grabs the number. All right, this is very important because now we can just check here on the labels. So let's go here. How do we get here to the labels? Well, we can go from my chart and we can go directly to data. So we're going here. We'll say this will be equal to my chart dot data dot. Let's see, what is it? Labels with an S. And then we need to get here the specific index number and the index number will be our data point save that refresh all right so now we can see here and you can see here the text is starting to change correctly so this is nice so it works but i want to do this one as well let's say the currency so let's do something here so we could use data structures and i have a separate video for that one so i will not focus on data structures here but uh, i will put a link later on you will see uh, at the end i'll recommend that video but let's say here, you just can create a new item, let's say a currency object, because this is still JavaScript. I'm going to create here an array. And then here we could say, for example, dollar for dollars. We can have here the peso. We can have here the uh, euro. We can have here the uh, rupees or rupee. Um, any kind of money you want more. I have no idea. Pounds, I guess. Or pound uh, sterling, etc. etc. So we have we should have like seven items: one, two, three, four, five, six, and then finally seven something else. Others. So I'm, uh, well, or maybe here dinner, the uh, the dinner. So we have that one. There we are. So then, what I want to do is I want to make sure we grab this and put that in here. So what we're going to do here exactly the same, enter, but now for the Y. And what is the value then? Well, this one is not correct. We start again with my chart. Then we go to data, and then we have dot. Remember, now we have to go from data to data sets. And remember, data sets is index zero because we only have one item here. Put that in there, and that's why you have here the data set index. Data set, and then we say dot. And here we could say currency. That's the one we just created. And index number will be the data point. Save that. Refresh. All right, so there we are. Now we have this one here. But you might say, well, how can we then undo this? Well, let's undo this now. So else, if that is not the case, what I want to do is I want to just copy all of this. So if there's like a point in that case, or else like that. So then what I want to do here is, what is our else? We can say it back to currency. This was the Y value. So we're going to put this back. And here we had, uh, I guess the days, or the weekdays, what was the name? A refresh week. All right, so we put in here the week. Save, refresh. So now we have this, and then we go back here. There we are. So it will reset nicely again. And that's basically how you can play around with these hoovering effects on our skills. 
So if you enjoyed this video, and as I told you in the video regarding the data structures, there's another way to do it, and that's with data structures, but I highly recommend you to watch this video, Understanding Data Structures in Chart.js, which is very powerful, and with this, you can combine everything all together instead of having separate currency object names or something else. So you can put them all into a X and Y value, which is far more better.